everyone, my name is Max, thanks for coming back to my channel, and today I'm going to be doing a book haul slash book review of The Flame in the Mist. Now The Flame in the Mist book review is going to be more of a discussion, it's going to be more spoilery, I'm going to be talking about what I liked and what I did not like about the book. But I will be doing the book haul first, so if you'd just like to see that because you haven't read the book, then you can do that as well. I have seven books to show you today because I have bought more books since my last book haul. Part of that, three of them are from book subscription boxes, so that's one thing. I didn't buy them myself. And the other four I did buy myself. So let's just get into it. The first book was the of Tomes publishing book that was advertised in the sneak peeks in the owl crate box and that is new world rising by jennifer wilson this is about a girl whose parents are killed and she decides to go beyond the wall of like this sanctuary that everyone lives in to maybe find her parents killers or something like that i'm not quite sure but i do really like the cover and then the next book was the featured uh book that came out in june for owl crate and this was the sandcastle empire by kayla olson this is about a girl named eden who after the apocalypse everyone or the whole world is ruled by something called the wolf pack and Eden knows the coordinates to this one island that is neutral and is not run by the wolf pack so she needs to get there this sounds so great I am kind of in love with the cover I do this is an owl crate exclusive cover I do like the original one a bit more because it's all green but I do like this I like its simplicity and I do like the feel like it's very smooth and shiny and the next book was the book that was featured in the June fairy loot box and this month it was Roar by Cora Carmack. This, I'm going to totally butcher this summary because I have a really hard time talking about it, but this is about a world where storms have kind of humanistic qualities, like they are trying to be harmful and everything, and this girl is the next in line to be queen, I believe, of her kingdom or of her country or something, and while her whole family has been able to control storms, she does not have that specific type of magic. But then she meets a boy who I believe she's supposed to be married, married, I believe they're betrothed, and she finds out that he is dealing in illegal storm magic. So he is, I believe, selling or buying magic to be able to control those storms. Might be totally wrong, I think it's something along those lines. It's, it's a little bit confusing for me, I'm not quite sure. And the next book, it was $4. It was 25% off, so I can't help but get a deal. And that's Windfall by Jennifer E. Smith. This is, I love Jennifer E. Smith. I've read two of her books. I do plan on reading, sorry, no, no, no. I do plan on reading one more in July, and, and, as, as well as this one. This, uh, all right, I'm sorry if the angle just changed. My cat kind of knocked over my camera. So I believe this is kind of like it was. Let's just keep going. This is about uh, two best friends where the girl gets the boy a lottery ticket for his birthday and he ends up winning. And so it's kind of dealing with everything after that. I don't really know anything else. I don't really want to know anything else. This is very different than Jennifer E. Smith's other covers. Usually they're like a bright color and two people and everything. So I'm not sure if this means it's going to have a bit of a different feel than the others. I'm not quite sure, but I'm really excited to get to it. All right, and the next book I decided to get is The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. This is the first book in the Wheel of Time series. I just, I don't know why, but I'm like really in the mood to read these. They're all huge. They're all like 800 plus pages and there's 14 of them. So it's going to be a long endeavor to finish all of these. But this is about a country where the dragon is supposed to be reborn in a person and that person I believe is supposed to save the world. 14 books. Most of them are written by Robert Jordan, but when Robert Jordan died, Brandon Sanderson took over the job. So I believe it's the first like 10 or 11 that Robert Jordan wrote and then the other four, three or four or five were written by Brandon Sanderson. I cannot wait to get into this series. Next year, I know, I'm like looking way too far ahead, but I do plan on having just a huge epic fantasy year where I read all of Brandon Sanderson novels, Morgan Rhodes books, these books, etc, etc, Robin Hobb, because I just want to get into some real high epic fantasy. 
And then in June, I decided to read to all the boys I loved before and absolutely adored it. So I decided to pick up the third one, Always and Forever, Lara Jean by Jenny Han. The second one is coming from Barnes & Noble, but it will get here in July. So I just decided to pick this one up because I just have a feeling that I'm going to want to marathon the other two because I really wish these two, I had these two when um, I finished all the boys I loved before because I really wanted to marathon it. If you don't know what this trilogy is about, it's about a girl named Lara Jean who, to get over a crush that she has, she writes them a letter. She talks about what she likes about the boy, what she doesn't like about the boy, but she never sends them. She just like puts in their address, she signs and dates and everything, but she doesn't send them. But one day she comes home from school to find out that all of them have been sent. It was so funny. It was just so fantastic. I hope that the other two are just as heartwarming and amazing as that one was. And the last book I got from, and the last book I have on my book haul is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I really want to get into some middle gray just because they're really easy, they're really fun, and this one, it won the Newbery Medal, so I decided why not start with this one and just look at this gorgeous cover. This, I believe, is about a, like a clan that sacrifices a child every year or whatever to the moon and this witch saves them and I don't know she relocates them or I don't know what she does with the kids but one girl that she saves she accidentally feeds moonlight so she has to raise her and she's got magic and everything and it just it just sounds so good it won the Newbery Prize so it's got to be good and this cover is just gorgeous and I cannot wait to get into this and now on to the second part of this video is the flame in the mist discussion. So this is going to be talking about what I liked about the book and what I didn't like about the book. There are going to be spoilers, so if you haven't read it or if you and if and you want to read it, I would not watch this video. But I'm going to start with my likes and then go to my dislikes. There are a lot more dislikes than likes. I wasn't a huge fan of this book, but let's just get into it. One of the things that I really enjoyed about this book is that it's very woman empowering. Mariko, our main character, is just she dresses up like a guy to infiltrate the clan that she believes tried to kill her and she is she's kind of treated not very good as a boy but then when some of them find out she's a girl they're very like well you're a girl you can do this like you know like she's just like you're making me stay behind because I'm a girl and they're like no we're to make you stay behind because you don't know how to fight and they just don't treat her any different because she's a girl which I just really really liked um I just thought that it's good because this is set you know, way back when she's about to be in arranged marriage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's just nice that these vill these people who you think are the villains treat her like an equal when people in her own civilization do not. And I just think that's really cool. Next one kind of goes with that, and it's a strong female lead. I thought Mariko was very, very strong. I thought she was a very brave, great main character. I think that she had a lot of bravery uh, to do what she did, and she's very smart and very witty. She might not be physically strong, but she's very mentally strong and very mentally powerful, and I just loved how she plotted, how she twisted, how she did things to benefit herself and her family. I just think that she did a really good job. I also really enjoyed the plot twists. Like, so, spoiler alert, real spoiler alert. One is that I believe the Emperor sent, um, someone to kill her. Like, it wasn't the Black Clan, which I thought was interesting because I don't think anyone really expected that it was the Emperor. I thought maybe Roku or Ry Riken, I think his name's Riken, her betrothed, but it was the Emperor himself, which I makes you wonder, like, why? Like, this is supposed to benefit you, you know? Why did you agree with it if you're just going to kill her? So I thought that was really interesting. And then the fact that Okami... Okami? I think his name's Okami. That Okami is actually Ramaru, and Ramaru is Okami. I was just like, did not expect that. I don't know if other people did, but I did not think that was a thing. I thought Okami was Okami, and Ramaru was Ramaru, and not that they were switched. I thought that was really interesting, and I thought that she did a really great job of that, not finding out until like the last 10 pages, I think it was. That was pretty cool, and I was just like, and then the last thing that I really enjoyed were the references to the title. So throughout the book, Mariko is talked about as being water, and but then finally she asks 
She asked Okami, if I am water, then what are you? And he said, my father always said that I was fire. And so that goes with flame and... And then she says, kind of about herself, she, wind could whip a fire into a frenzy, make every oak bow, lash water into mist. And she's kind of talking about herself in this. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. So then Okami is thinking about her, and he says that wind could whip a fire into a frenzy, make... Mighty oak bow, lash water into mist. And he is talking about her when he is talking about this mist. And I, so that just kind of brings together the whole flame in the mist aspect. Um, I don't really know what the in the mist is supposed to be because he's the flame, she's the mist. I don't really understand the total reference of the title or if it's just supposed to sound pretty and metaphorical and stuff, but I did really like it. In the fairy loot that came in May, you got either a flame candle or a mist candle, and I know that the candle company that made them, I can't remember what it is. In the wick of time, they actually, they're starting to brand them, like make their the candles public, but it's going to be Okami and Mariko instead of flame and mist, which I thought was really cool because it does make sense. And now onto the dislikes. What really drove me crazy was how much she like said little empowering tidbits to herself. Like here's one. Make a decision, Hattori Mariko. How do you wish to die? And like, that's her name. But I never say to myself, okay, Maxine Hansford, what are you gonna do? Maxine, you know, all that stuff. But she says her first and last name every time she talks about herself, talks to herself. And I just thought that was really annoying because it just doesn't make any sense. No one says their first and last names to themselves. First name, okay. Like, okay, Max, you can do this. Okay, Mariko, you can do this. Not, okay, Hitori Mariko. Like, no one does that. And that kind of drove me insane. Number two, how quickly Okami forgave her. It was like, when, um, at the whorehouse, I can't remember what it's called, but it's pretty much a whorehouse. When she is trying to alert him to her brother's presence, she whacks him with a lantern and then throws a shooting star at him. And he just like, he's just like, okay. Like he gets angry at her for a hot sec and then it's gone. And then he's like all okay with her. And I'm like, that makes no sense. Along those same lines, when he found out she was a girl, he did not even care. Like, wouldn't you care if it turns out this boy who you think is a spy is a girl? Like, I would question. I'd be like, what the hell? Like, what are you doing? And, and then, oh my god, as soon as he finds out she's a girl because he pulls her out of the pool or whatever, they're making out. Like, she, she's just like, you know who I am, and then kissing, and he's just like, okay. Like, it makes no sense. That makes absolutely zero sense. They should not be kissing immediately. And like, like that kind of shows that he always had attraction for her, but when she was a guy. So, I mean, maybe he's bi. Okay, that's fine. But that's not a dress. It's just like, oh, you're a girl. Great. Let's make out. It made no sense. I did not like that whatsoever. And all of the unanswered questions. The two of them talk about lies throughout the whole book. And like, you tell me a truth, I'll tell you a truth. And Okami is just like, you know, you have to tell a lie that's buried in truth sort of thing, but you never learn what the truths are. Maybe in the next book you will, or maybe him being Ramaru answers some of them, but I don't know. I did not like that. They were just kept talking about all these unanswered lies and we didn't get anything. And we got both of their points of views, so we could have learned the lies. We could have been omni omniscient, you know? It was just ridiculous and I just didn't think it was necessary how many lies were unanswered in the end and it made me angry. And the last thing I didn't like was how boring this book was. It is 392 pages and almost nothing happens. Like there are maybe two, three action scenes in the whole book. And it's really just her trying to gain their trust and it's just really boring. I wasn't a huge fan of that portion and it just drove me insane. And 
it just made me angry because there were so many times where I'm like, why am I reading this? I'm not motivated to read this. The only reason why I really finished this is because it's Renee Audier. And I read The Wrath and the Dawn duology this month and I absolutely adored it. So I really wanted to read her other stuff because I wanted her to become an auto buy author for me. And even though she is, because I probably will buy the second one, it's a duology, I just... Uh, it just drove me crazy and I wasn't a huge fan. I probably gave this, and I'm probably being nice by giving it a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I liked the writing, I liked Mariko as a character, I liked the characters themselves, sometimes I didn't like how they interacted with each other and that's what got just drove me crazy. Alright everyone, thanks for watching, I'll see you on Monday with a tag video, bye!